Robots can do practically anything these days, but if there's one thing we could really use them for right now, it's delivering stuff. Thanks to all this coronavirus lockdown business, it's either inconvenient, dangerous, or downright impossible to go out and buy things from physical brick and mortar stores, which has caused a massive uptick in online ordering for practically everything. Food, toilet paper, bidets, gym equipment you're gonna use for a month and then neglect until you have to move out, everything. And that's a problem because it's putting a huge burden on delivery people who have to risk their lives and work crazy hours just to make sure that everyone else doesn't run out of Instant Pots and Flaming Hot Cheetos. But does it have to be like this? Couldn't we just use robots to take some of that pressure off of humans? I'm Drew Prindle, and this is Robots Everywhere, a show where we chronicle the slow but steady takeover of our future robot overlords and show you how they're making their way into practically every facet of modern life. Let's start at the top. The holy grail of robotic delivery is arguably drones. There's nothing more sci-fi and futuristic than a sky filled with thousands of flying robots autonomously whizzing to and fro, ferrying packages and passengers from A to B. Unfortunately, we're not quite at that point. I mean, we have the technology, it's just not really everywhere yet. In fact, if you spend any amount of time on the internet at all, you've probably seen delivery drones from some of the companies that are leading the charge in the industry. One of the most high-profile ones is Amazon Prime Air, which is a vertical takeoff and landing drone from Amazon that also kind of looks like a plastic IKEA bed frame that can fly. Then there's Google's Wing Drone, which looks kind of like a dumpy float plane with pontoons glued directly to the wings and is capable of lowering packages down on a little retractable claw. There's also a bunch more from shipping companies like UPS, FedEx, and DHL. Practically every major shipping organization is getting in on the action. Now, before we get any deeper here, I want to take a second to explain why these drones all look so weird. The reason is that they're designed for both vertical takeoff and landing and high-speed forward winged flight. In other words, they use propellers to go up and down, but are also capable of flying forward and reaching speeds necessary to create lift with their wings, which saves energy over long distances because they don't have to run all of their propellers to stay in the air. So at this point, you're probably wondering why then, even with all of this amazing drone technology, do we not have same-day drone-based shipping available to everyone? A couple reasons for that. First and foremost is logistics. We just don't have a good drone traffic control system yet. The FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, has been working for the past few years to figure out how to keep track of a zillion tiny aircraft in the sky and prevent them from crashing into not only each other, but also passenger planes and buildings and cars, and unfortunately we still don't have a great system in place. And until that's done, drone delivery just won't be possible to pull off safely, at least not at a large scale. The second reason is efficiency. It might seem like flying a package over the streets and flying in a straight line to its destination would be more efficient than putting it in a van, but the fact of the matter is that drones have to fight gravity the whole time that they're in the air, which means running propellers and consuming energy. So right now, that makes drones far more inefficient than ground-based modes of transportation, like trucks, vans, and even trains, none of which have to fight gravity as much in order to move around. And barring some major technological leap that makes drones crazy efficient, that's probably not going to change anytime soon. So despite the fact that they're super cool, delivery drones just don't make a ton of sense right now. Which brings me to my next point. Flying delivery bots aren't practical right now, but terrestrial delivery bots that rove around on the ground? Totally different story. In fact, there are tons of companies, big and small, that are busy developing ground-based robots that can autonomously haul packages right to your front door. The best example of this trend is arguably Starship Robotics. This company, which, by the way, was founded by the guys who created Skype, has developed what looks like a six-wheeled cooler that can securely store packages inside its chamber and then autonomously drive on sidewalks to deliver them. It's super clever because by sticking to sidewalks and other footpaths instead of actual roads, these robots don't need to meet the super high safety standards that autonomous cars are held to. This basically means that they're cheaper and less technologically complex to deploy, so Starship already has a bunch of them out in the world delivering stuff, and has already made over 100,000 deliveries. Right now, it's mostly operating at university campuses, but it's also available in certain cities in the UK and plans to expand more in the very near future. The good news is that you won't have to wait for Starship before you can get stuff delivered robotically to your house. Starship's six-wheeled sidewalk bot idea debuted back in 2014, and since then has been copied by a bunch of competitors, one of which just so happens to be this little company that you may have heard of called Amazon. 
Back in early 2019, the company unveiled Amazon Scout, a robot that looks uncannily similar to the one that Starship makes. Now, Scout hasn't been deployed very widely yet, and is still doing small-scale trials in just two cities, but if there's any company that's going to make robotic delivery mainstream, it's Amazon. That's not all, though. There are loads of other companies working on the same thing. FedEx is getting in on the sidewalk robot game, too, and is pushing the envelope. Get it? They send mail. They're pushing the envelope by designing even more advanced robot tech. In 2019, the company launched its Roxo robot, which, in addition to autonomously navigating footpaths, can also climb stairs and deliver stuff directly to your doorstep. If you think that's wild, though, just wait until you see what Ford is cooking up. Technically, they didn't develop this robot themselves, but they did toss a bunch of money to this company called Agility Robotics, which has developed a crazy bipedal package delivery bot with articulated hip joints and these weird ostrich-looking legs. Not only can this monster climb stairs and drop off packages, but it can also take that final step and ring your doorbell to let you know. So clearly, when it comes to delivery bots, there is a lot of amazing tech out there. We've got ostrich robots, we've got sidewalk surfing cooler robots, and we have drones with retractable claws. All things that seem like they were plucked straight from the pages of a sci-fi novel. But while they're all super impressive and getting more advanced with each passing month, chances are low that any of these delivery methods will become mainstream anytime soon. It's going to take time for the companies behind these amazing robots to refine their technology and scale up their operations. So we're probably still looking at another three to five years minimum before robot delivery is something that the average person has access to. And honestly, probably more like 10 years before it's a common part of everyday life. So really, what I'm trying to say is that here in 2020, robots are out there. But by 2030, robots are going to be everywhere.